Welcome, it is Thursday night, it is all influencer wrestling time, let's get things going. I, as always, am your clout missioner, Captain Tyrion Fidel, the most nationally and some pirate in all of professional wrestling. Welcome to All Influencer Wrestling. We are kicking things off with a six-man multi-person match to determine that coveted number 30, actually in this case it will be number 20 entrance slot, for the men's rumble match at All Influencer Wrestling overboard this coming Sunday. First up into the ring, you know him, you love him. He's been training hard, trying to shake off the losing streak he's been on this season. It's Stephen Joyce. We've got a new side I think we'll be seeing to Stephen tonight. He's been really working to uplift the dethroned Abel Theron, who is also in this match tonight. Stephen looking to strike out for himself now and chase that clout. And from Avalon, weighing in at 150 pounds, the dream. And speaking of our inaugural sold clout champion, here he is, Abel Theron no longer with the cloud around his waist went to steve sparks and then to our current holder averick bright moon we'll be seeing both of those two later on tonight but abel looking to climb his way back to the top and that third that 20 slot in the rumble match is a great way to do that And looking to stand in everybody's way. The golden ticket looking to re-establish himself in the all-influencer wrestling landscape. This is not somebody you want to see barreling down at the very end of a grueling rumble match. Towering dominant the golden ticket coming in at that final slot completely fresh would be a dangerous proposition for everyone else but a glorious chance for the golden ticket looking to punch his way straight to a title shot against Averick And here we have a competitor very familiar with the golden ticket. A man who has had multiple encounters with GT, Renace Crimson, always hovering around the top of the clout chases, never quite able to punch his way through. Renace has proven himself to be a powerhouse in the ring many a time over. And again, Coming in at that last spot would be a golden opportunity for Crimson.
lest we not forget though speaking of opportunities there are two clout chasers in particular who already have exactly what they need and are just waiting for the right moment to enact it brock and presary both have a drama bomb each just waiting for the right time to drop it Both members of Tank Main in action here tonight. Chris Kinnias entering this match. Battlestar Galactica will be in action in the other multi-competitor match later on tonight. Well acquainted with both Steven and Renace. Though the friendship between Kinnias and Crimson fractured at the hands of Golden Ticket, we've yet to see them really reunite They've been in multi-man matches before, have yet to really settle the differences. Is that a situation that GT will be able to take advantage of in this match? Kinnias himself, not somebody who has ever really targeted that top clout prize, having been embroiled in situations like the war between Renace and Golden Ticket, and as a member of Team Tank Main, embroiled in Battlestar Galactica's woes with metrics. Activating combat mode. Is he now seeing a path clear to the top for himself? Slowing it right back down, our final entrance into this match. Gabriel Van Hessel, the Witch Hunter. mysterious opponent nobody has ever seen Van Hessel without that plague mask on a brief alliance at one point seems to have forged between the unpredictable Steve Sparks and Van Hessel did not last long Van Hessel seemingly realizing that Sparks was attempting to manipulate them and pushed back out on their own Nobody entirely certain really what Van Hessel is out for, what the Vatican has dispatched him here to All Influencer Wrestling to do. But we know one thing, he's here to chase Cloud. Speaking of chasing Cloud, if you want to get hold of some yourself without having to step foot inside the squared circle, we do of course have shop.tyrion.com for all your All Influencer Wrestling merchandise needs. We've got mouse pads, we've got shower curtains, we've got rugs, we've got all manner of merchandise for you to slap on to your body. Shop.tyrion.com, go check it out.
And it is time. All six competitors in the ring at once. We are ready to go. And Theron immediately out the gate. Canadian destroyer by Abel Theron to Chris Canias. Theron is not playing around here tonight. Six-way rules. The first competitor to be pinned or submitted wins, or loses the match rather. The first to pin or submit their opponent will win the match. There is no elimination in this. One pin, one submission. That is all it takes. Everyone in this match needs to keep their eyes on their opponents at all times. Getting too caught up in one tussle of your own could mean losing sight of needing to go and break up a match ending situation. Regardless of who, who wins this, however, all six of these men will be in the Rumble match this Sunday, all influencer wrestling overboard. Renee's here seemingly demonstrating the strategy there, hoying Golden Ticket around up onto his shoulder. 20 men entering the match. One by one, they will be thrown over that top rope until only one remains, who will have a clear title shot later on at the title currently held by Abrick Brightmoon, the Sold Clout Championship. Two such matches on Sunday as well. The other half of the roster, a full 30-person match there. And there's what I was talking about. Renee's going for that pinfall. Van Hessel there to break it up. Golden ticket, seemingly having vicious intentions with those steel steps on the outside. Renee's playing spoiler, but then he's got the got hold of the steps himself. And <laughs> ticket trying to ward off Renee's. <laughs> Excellent teamwork there by Theron and Ren. Theron distracting Golden Ticket long enough for Ren to crack him in the back of the head with those steps. Kineas and Van Hessel in the middle of the ring and now this is a golden situation for one of these two as all four other men are wrestling away on the outside. I think Stephen Joy is playing strategist there, realizing this situation through Golden Ticket in to make sure that nobody can quite get the upper hand. Van Hessel's got that chokehold locked in deep. Cutting off the oxygen to Kinea's golden ticket there to break up that. And over goes GT. And there's Steven. Tried to capitalize, but overpowered by Gabriel Van Hessel. Though whilst many of our matches are building towards those rumble matches later on, we do have title action tonight after their dominance over the Dangerous Alliance last week, the newly formed team of The Circle, Amber Warren and Victoria Holland will get a shot at the Soul Clout tag titles currently held by Candied Ginger. Thus far undefeated since owning those. Her Royal Highness the Ginger Flame, she who sings on the grave of her enemies and Andy Holiday will have their work cut out for them later on tonight. Kinias, meanwhile, bounced off the announce table. And so Renee plants Abel Theron. Van Hessel there to capitalize, chopped to the chest of Renee's Crimson. The power of Golden Ticket being demonstrated on the outside. And there's Steven. Sends Van Hessel down the map. Rolls out of the way. The prone body there of Kinias on the outside. Absolutely drubbed in by Golden Ticket. Barely able to get back to his feet. And down it goes the spine of Crimson onto that wooden deck. Uh, Kinias pulling out the kendo stick. 
Multi-man action, all weapons are legal. And there's Van Hessel again, got that chokehold locked in on Steven. Abel realized, there to break that up. And down goes Van Hessel, Kani is waiting there to capitalize. And knee to the gut of the dream, Abel Theron. Meanwhile, I think Golden Ticker had spied that discarded kendo stick. Nope, never mind. Stepped right over it. Laser focused on Van Hessen. Head scissors take down. Down goes Kaneas in the middle of the ring. This is that situation I was talking about. Van Hessel and Crimson too distracted on the outside. Somehow Kaneas dug deep, but that is exactly what I was talking about. Too focused on the action on the outside of the ring. Theron almost had the match won there. Steven Joy's back to his feet on the outside. Seemingly dazed. Now just to shake himself out of it. Kaneas waits for Van Hessel to get back to his feet. What does the pirate have in mind? Up we go, and anchors away. Down goes the neck of Van Hessel. Is anyone paying attention? Is anyone going to realize? Uh, Renace barely in, the, in time, but didn't actually need it. Van Hessel dug really deep down, just able to get that shoulder up. And pile driver now to Kaneas by Crimson. Can he follow through, picking apart the work done by Kaneas against Van Hessel? Oh, Van Hessel slips through though, and Chopblock takes down the leg of Crimson. Double flying drop kick by Van Hessel takes down Kaneas. Is that going to be a Renz caught on the outside? And he's got it. That was it. That was enough. That drop kick took out the pirate. Gabriel Van Hessel claims the number 20 spot. An unexpected result, perhaps, but what a showing by Gabriel Van Hessel. The Vatican are going to be happy with that result. will be the final entrant into our first Rumble match on Sunday. They'll come in fresh after everyone's been in there a while. What is that going to mean for everyone else? The rest of the, uh, the order of entrants, of course, completely random. It'll be an interesting time. We will be back, however, with more clout chasing action after these quick messages. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Captain Turiant Gaidel, most definitely handsome pirate in all of Lumsalaminsa, and the clout missioner of all influencer wrestling. As a swashbuckling pirate, I know a thing or two about hats. And sometimes, even I feel the hats I own are just too big. So when I feel the need for minuscule millinery, there's only one place that comes to mind. TinyHatLabs.com Tiny Hat Labs have always sought to push the boundaries of what's possible in client engagement millinery feedback solutions. Their guiding question remains the same today as it was when they were founded. What if small hat, but tiny? Operating at the nexus of science, engineering, artificial intelligence, art, fashion and design, Tiny Hat Labs seeks to pave the way to a paradigm shift in headpiece technology. While others ask how much, TinyHatLabs.com asks how little. I'm Captain Tyrion Guidel, and TinyHatLabs.com is my favourite place for hats on the internet. We are back, and before we head to that tag title match I mentioned earlier, somebody is out for revenge. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making our way to the ring, representing 
The Dangerous Alliance from Harlem, New York. The Latina sensation, Teresa Dominguez. <laughs> the war that exploded last week between the Dangerous Alliance and the Circle had collateral damage. And one clout chaser who is not happy with being considered cannon fodder is Fenris. With the circle busy with Candied Ginger later on tonight, Fenris has called out the Dangerous Alliance, seeking vengeance for being caught in the crossfire between these two teams. Wolf Fenris looking to even the score with the Dangerous Alliance. We've got New York versus Chicago. This is going to be a fight. Remember last week when the Circle made their presence known? The Dangerous Alliance were originally supposed to be fighting the team of Fenris and Lucette Forrester. Taken out by the Circle to take their place in the match, Fenris is not happy to have been overlooked. Not happy to have been taken out by the Circle on route to facing down the Dangerous Alliance. No doubt the Circle themselves will find themselves in Fenris's targets before too long, but with other business keeping them occupied for tonight, it's Teresa, Teresa Dominguez who faces the wrath of Fenris. Locking up Calypso, keeping an eye on her sister from ringside as always. And flying elbow tying into the ropes. Teresa not here to play. After their destruction at the hands of the circle last week, both Dominguez sisters infuriated. Fenris may well find herself the target of an outpouring of rage from Dominguez, regardless of her own desire for vengeance. Working over the arms of Fenris, trying to take away those powerful striking capabilities. Fenris rolls out of the ring for a moment to recover. And Duke's out of the way, baited that dive by Teresa and sh a drastic shift in the, mo in the momentum for Fenris right now. Just trading blows, counters and blocks these two very evenly matched. Teresa wriggles through chop block takes down the leg of Fenris leg drop to the back of the head and counter by Fenris now taking Teresa down to the outside rolling it back into the middle of the ring and back around on the outside right into that chop from Fe from Teresa and wrenching the arm backs, we don't see Dominguez bust this move out often. Taking advantage of that earlier attempt to work over the arms of the Dark Wolf. And now it's Teresa's turn to be tied up in those ropes as Fenris works over the leg. Sequence of clotheslines by the Dark Wolf, rope assisted Lying clothesline, trying to cave in the chest of Teresa. Yeah. 
And my word, locking in the wrist of Dominguez and just showing off the sheer power of the Dark Wolf there. Beating, taunting Teresa, daring her to get back up. Oh, and there we saw it again. Teresa able to wriggle out of another suplex attempt. Every time Fenris gets Teresa up, she's too slippery. Able to just wriggle out of the grasp. Neither competitor really getting a solid advantage over the other. A very, very back and forth matchup between these two. Fenderus kicking out at two, but holding the gut there. Did some damage, and Teresa hoiling away up to the top. Yelling at Fenris to get back to her feet, and over it goes. And Fenris had that scouted, ducked out of the way. Teresa's gone at high risk a few times, and there has been no reward for it as of yet. Fenris knows those high-flying capabilities of Teresa Dominguez and has prepared for them expertly. Face planted down. She's got that pin in deep. Is that going to do it? No, Teresa kicks out at two. Fenris cannot believe that that did not do it. Lighting up the chest of Dominguez with those vicious, vicious chops. Sends her into the ropes. And smash down goes the neck of Teresa Dominguez into that top rope. Fenris now very, very much in control of this match. Launches Dominguez right back into the ring, follows right back up through. Fenris now going up to the top rope herself. What does the Dark Wolf have in mind? Flying elbow, Teresa's time to have it scouted, rolled out of the way. Going high is not working out for either of these two tonight. Technical expertise of Teresa on display, working over the limbs, and now she's just choking the life out of the Dark Wolf. And powerful kick out at two. Big flurry there by, Dere by uh, Fenris, excuse me. May have been the last burst of energy she had, though. Or maybe not, this time got Teresa up, not able to escape this time. But kick to the face, Teresa now shifting the momentum back in her favour. And down goes Fenris, is that going to be enough? Teresa doesn't think so. That might do it, crashing down onto those bruised ribs. No, Fenris kicks out at two, Fenris still in this match. The fury of Fenris fueling her fighting spirit. Taunt by Teresa. We've seen that cost her time and time again. Is it going to do it again? Good ring awareness by the Dominguez sister, shifting Fenris away from those ring ropes. But taking the time to reposition gave Fenris a little bit of time to recover. Oh, and she's got the submission locked in deep. And Fenris forced to tap out. Simply too much damage accumulated over the course of the map. The match, excuse me, Fenris forced to tap. Teresa Dominguez takes the match. What an evenly matched competition, though. Fenris has nothing to be upset about with that performance.
Not the end result she wanted, but very, very much took Teresa to the limit of her abilities. We don't often see Teresa have to go for the submission win. Normally, she prefers to go for the pinfall offense. Having to dig that deep into her arsenal shows just how far she had to go to put the Dark Wolf down. But back after the next break we have upcoming, it'll be The Circle, the ones who caused this conflict to kick off, taking their stab at the Sold Clout tag titles. The Circle versus Candy Ginger, up next. We'll be right back. Luz tried everything to open the door, but it wouldn't budge. Hammers, axes, magic, saws, more magic, fire, even more magic, and magic explosions. Still, the door refused her. Why? After all this time and effort, why wouldn't the damn thing open? Sure, it was an enchanted door that would open the path to a potentially catastrophic amount of magic pouring back into the universe, causing endless natural disasters that would drown or bury most cities from existence. But there was an equally high chance that wouldn't happen, and that the magic had been sealed away by ignorant fools for nothing. She had to believe there was a reason why she could tap into a sliver of the magic locked behind the door. That this was it, her singular life purpose. Open the door. Restore its magic back to everyone like it used to be in the stories, where anyone could use magic, for good or bad. That had to be it, right? That had to be why she was standing here, in the door's pocket dimension, on a small plot of earth, large enough for only one person to stand in front of it, swearing at this void black door with iridescent veins flowing along its surface like water, living, taunting her to just open it already. So why was it so hard to swing the damn thing wide? Somehow, she had shoved the door apart just a crack ages ago. A thin, wispy line of light seeped out of a seam down the centre. Whenever she used teleportation magic, as she had decided to call it since she didn't know the correct term and hadn't seen others use it before, probably because it was dangerous and required sliding through space and time, but who was counting? She tapped into a sliver of warmth and power to travel wherever she wished. She'd managed that slight opening unthinking as a child, then never again. What was she doing wrong now? Worse, what if she wasn't doing anything wrong? What if this door wasn't meant to open for her after all? What else could there be for her but this? After everything, after all that searching, what else could there be? This has been an extract from The Void Door by V. M. Ayala. To read the full story, please visit beneath-ceaseless-skies.com and search for issue 378. And thank you for watching Masterpiece Theatre. Welcome back to Tag Title Competition. making their way out together, Victoria Holland and Amber Warren. No need for music with these two, they're all business. Showcasing perhaps an equal partnership being on the same team, neither one of their entrance themes taking precedence over the other, they are here as a unit. And just look at the sheer size of both of these women. Units is exactly what they are. Candied Ginger are going to have a hell of a title defense against them.
and double clout title around her waist. One half of the tag champions, Candied Ginger, her royal highness, the Ginger Flame, she who sings on the graves of her enemies, will she be singing on the graves of the circle tonight? Or will there be a dirge performed for Candied Ginger? and see, hear her rather than see her riding around in the backstage area. Candy Holiday, the brilliant biker, certainly the most colorful entrant into this match, dwarfed by all of the rest of the competitors, but as she has proven time and time again, that is not a hindrance for Candy Holiday. The circle waiting, watching on in their corner. And there's her tag partner, the Ginger Flame. Candy Holiday hyped and ready to go, ready to defend. That's what it's all about, the double clout. The following contest is a tag team match set for one fall and is for the Action Thanks. Championship! Introducing the challengers. The Circle, Amber Warren, Victoria Holland. Opponents, they are the Action Champions. Candied Ginger, the Ginger Flame, and Candy Holiday. The inaugural Double Clout Champions, nobody else has been able to wrest those titles away from Candied Ginger thus far. It looks like we have the Ginger Flame and Victoria Holland starting the match out. And Victoria just shoving the Ginger Flame around. We've seen this before, the sheer power of Victoria Holland. And immediately going for the pinfall. There was no way that was going to score anything other than a one. But that's a message sent by Victoria Holland. Trying to get into the head of the Ginger Flame there. Saying I could end this match now if I wanted. Cracking the spine over the knee. Victoria Holland is destroying the Ginger Flame in this match thus far. And again over the knee, trying to wreck the guts. And here we go for the tag and Amber Warren now legal. Ginger Flame waiting for that out. Tried to, to get a grasp onto Warren, just missed and took a flying clothesline from the top rope for her troubles. Uh, desperately needed tag now by Ginger Flame. It's Candy Holiday now, the legal competitor. Striking offense, that's what we've seen from Candy time and time again. That quick shift in momentum, that is what Candy Ginger needs. This is where Candy shines, that firecracker offense flurries of blows dangerous limbs try and ducked out of the way of warren and able to roll through and now candy sending the same message deep through got a two count on amber candy witnessing the mind games from the circle early and turning it right back against them
Candy is not here to showcase anything technical. She is just pounding away at Amber, and now it's the Ginger Flames time for some payback. Chop. Got the leg up, and over goes Amber, still having it locked in deep and trying to wrench the knee down, and now it's the Ginger Flames turn. One, two. Broken up by Victoria Holland. I think the Ginger Flame there, considering going for Victoria, thought better of it, and just a disrespectful slap across the face of Amber Warren. And tagging back in, it's Candy back in the ring, flying punch off the mid rope. Amber Warren now isolated. It's very much a turn of fortunes for the circle. Amber now needs to really get that tag in. She's taken quite a bit of punishment from the Candy Ginger team up until now. Victoria still relatively fresh. Amber, though, having got the upper hand, wants to lay in some punishment onto Candy Holiday now. with a two count got that in deep on amber the all influencer wrestling universe loving this match the chance of tag team wrestling and the poor ring awareness there by holiday right in the circle's corner Victoria Holland easily able to break up that pinfall, but Candy turning her attention to Holland now, sending her crashing down to the side. And DDT down goes Amber Warren. Victoria still on the outside. This could be a grand opportunity. Oh, had the running spin kick blocked. Warren had it scouted, but we got the knee strike in anyway. Hyping herself up, though. Candy wasn't paying attention, and that allowed Amber to go and get that desperately needed tag. Victoria Holland, extremely fresh. Andy felt that mistake. It's back to where we started. Ginger Flame versus Victoria Holland. Spinning back elbow. And the Vic uh, the, the can uh, excuse me, the Ginger Flame once again are being dismantled by the powerhouse that is Victoria Holland. Victoria very, very much carrying the circle in this match thus far. Amber putting in a solid showcase herself, but Victoria has been the dominant of the pair by far. Turning her attention to Candy Holiday. Candy, though, was ready for it, counters that blow. And another backstrike, and look at that teamwork by Candy Ginger successfully isolating Victoria Holland into the corner. Up to the top rope, what does the Ginger Flame? Oh, beautiful moonsault by the Ginger Flame. Victoria tried to roll out of the way, but... Bouncing through, though didn't do enough damage, took enough, a moment to bask in the glory of that maneuver, and that gave Victoria time to recover. And if there's one thing you do not want to give Victoria, it's time to get back onto her feet and find her footing. Leg drop by Holland. And now we got the tag. Amber Warren, now the legal competitor. Ginger Flame struggling back to her feet. Didn't quite make the... Oh no, rolled through. And strikes lighting up. And down face plant. Amber Warren, and this time... 
again, there is that ring awareness. A performer like the Ginger Flame you would think would know better about their stage positioning. Missile drop kick sends Victoria Holland crashing down though. This is a golden opportunity for the Ginger. Amber, aware of that, able to power out before the Ginger Flame can haul her over to her team's corner. And down goes Ginger Flame, but Candy Holiday is right there to play spoiler. Boot to the shoulder, breaks up that pinfall. Victoria Holland charging through, has a sight set on Holiday. And look at the sheer strength of Amber Warren deadlifted the, uh, the, the Ginger Flame right up onto the shoulders there. This is a dangerous position. Wrenching the ribs and Candy came through to try and rescue her partner, but Victoria was there waiting. Dangerous, dangerous position for the Ginger Flame right now. Candy Holiday taken out. Oh, fighting her way through elbows to the gut of Amber. And spinning elbow drop, down it goes Warren. And there we just saw on the corner of your screens, Candy Holiday is back in action. And we have the figure four locked in. And we've got the bridge the bridge too far that is amber warren in a dangerous predicament and she taps the bridge too far puts away amber warren candy's ginger by a hair hold on to their tag titles the ginger flame claims the victory the flame's soul would be singing if she had won but nonetheless, Candy's Ginger proving why they still hold those, soul, those double clout titles. One of their toughest defenses to date, but they roll through into overboard. Still the double clout champions. What a hard-hitting showcase of a match. And congratulations, Candied Ginger, continuing it through. Hard-hitting action, though, is I'm sure what we are up for next as we have a grudge match waiting in the wings. The Phantom versus Tiff will be up next. We'll be right back after these short messages. We are back. These two teams have been getting very, very familiar with each other of late. It's scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from wherever he wants. Weighing in at 294 pounds, the Phantom. Oh, the Phantom and Sparks proven to be a longer lasting duo than perhaps most anticipated. The rivalry between Sparks and Phantom and the team of Tiff and Averick really heating up over the last couple of weeks culminated in Sparks losing his newly won Sold Clout title to Bright Moon. This time it's the other halves of the team going at it, Phantom looking to exact some vengeance and perhaps stake his claim for a shot at Averick's now title. Pounds. 
And here he is, gyrating his way down to the ring. Hailing all the way from Imon, Ale uh, Imon Alexandria. It's Tiff. This teal tiefling, not to be underestimated. A childhood friend of both Averick and Ashapol. Tiff has proven himself in the ring many times over here in All Influencer Wrestling, looking to do it again against the Phantom tonight. The Leather Pants, they're doing a positively amazing job holding together with that leg stretch. Tiff just relaxing in the corner, baiting, taunting Phantom. From Tiff, that is all mind games. He knows how to get inside the head of his opponent. Phantom looking to play spoiler himself there, baiting Tiff over in the, in the turnbuckle. And planting him with a vicious elbow strike. Working over the ribs. Planting him down. Phantom again, not one of our more technical uh, technical combatants here at AI Dub. He hits hard and he hits fast. That's all he really needs to do. Exactly like that. Draping knee strike right to the temple of Tiff. Fights his way out though. Tried to go for a crossbody. Phantom caught him and cracked the spine over the knee. Tiff though, able to fight his way back in, goes for the pinfall right in front of Sparks very early on in the match, but sending a message there, I think, to Steve Sparks. Of course, as this tag rivalry has been heating up, we can't ignore the other teams that have been not just forming, but establishing themselves as a dominant presence here in AI Dub. Thinking specifically of the Dastardly Doo-Woo and RBFS who have been going at it themselves time and time again. We saw the Double Clout Championships just defended by Candy Ginger, but only accessible to one half of the roster. A solid case is being made to create tag titles for this side of the divisions as well. Tiff rolling Phantom back into the ring. And tried to go for the DDT, countered by Phantom, sends him crashing down. Phantom praising whatever deity he follows, but Tiff right there to capitalize. And Tiff up to the top rope and flying elbow drop down onto the prone body of Phantom. And suck it, says Tiff, but Phantom's dark magic abilities teleporting behind Tiff. He was waiting for that. But over right into a waiting set of chops by Tiff and crack down goes Phantom's head onto the ship's decking. Another very evenly matched competition we've seen here tonight. Neither Tiff nor Phantom able to really get a solid enough 
stretch of momentum going against each other to fully capitalize and put a lot of hurt, but sweet chin music. Tiff collapses over Phantom. Tiff turning me into a 12's damned liar. Tiff puts away the Phantom. As Tiff and Averick pull further ahead, it seems, in this rivalry, is that going to lead to fractions, uh, fractures, excuse me, in the team of Steve Sparks and Phantom? And there is no friendship here. This was an alliance formed out of a mutual desire to find success. And if they're not finding that, you have to wonder, what future does this team have? But speaking of future, somebody's is going to be determined. Up next, it's our other six competitor multi-match tonight. We will be determining our second final entrant into one of our two Rumble matches on Sunday. Who will claim the coveted number 30 spot at the main event of Overboard? We'll find out after these short messages. We'll be right back. Suplex an octopus. And here is our octopus friend though. Can I suplex an octopus? Nope. Can't suplex an octopus, turns out. Too slippery. Can I suplex Ultima Weapon? So we're going to start chucking some shuriken. I can suplex Ultima Weapon. Come on, we're so close. We have to, come on, Savin. Come on. Suplex! Boom! Hippo power! Six competitors preparing to make their way down to the ring. And here's our first. The following is scheduled for one fall. Make your way to the ring. Representing Chaos from Valhalla. The Tank. Tank. Battlestar Galactica unable to put Glix away last week, finally getting her one-on-one -on -one match, but falling just short, though again it took Glix utilizing her magical druidic abilities, using that misty step to teleport behind Battlestar to shift the momentum and put her away. Magic seeming to be the weakness the Battlestar has yet to figure out a way to overcome here in all influencer wrestling. It was what led to her torment at the hands of Metrix. It's cost her a title shot against Glix. This type of match, though, much better suited to the tank main. Six competitors all at once. It's going to be a hard-hitting affair. And 
from New York, MJ. As we watch our second competitor, the Mother of Pain, make her way down to the ring, I can't help but sit here and realize just how many competitors in all influence of wrestling really use a very strong purple color palette. But nonetheless, the unpredictable, chaotic pinball that is the Mother of Pain charging her way down to the ring. This type of match are very well suited for a force of unpredictable chaos like the Mother of Pain. She'll appear out of nowhere and score a victory, and that's something that it's very easy to do in a match like this. And this is why Asha Paul was not out there with Tiff and Averick earlier tonight. Asha trying to get her own way back into the Sold Clout title picture. Tiff victorious over Phantom just before this match. Can Asha continue this streak of victory that the Iman Orphans have been on of late? If Asha can claim this 30 spot and win the Rumble on Sunday, surely that will put that faction in an incredibly controlling position. And because we have to have somebody in the match who's likely to take a pinfall, it's Matt. The inaugural, much as it pains me to say it, sold clout champion defeated by Blix, who has held it ever since. Mac looking to lie, cheat, and steal her way back into that title picture, and getting that final slot would be a good way to do it. I, she stole the damn frames again. Cor she stole them again. Corey, she... Yeah, can we get the... Thank you. And looking to re-establish her own presence, Chen Harper, the mentor to many of our New York contingent members of the circle, the Dangerous Alliance. They are very familiar with Chen, have a storied, storied history with her, but thus far has shown up mostly to try to set her students back on the straight and narrow. This is a chance for Chen to really strike out herself and gain some of that coveted clout and establish just why she is such a respected force on the New York indie scene. And here comes our final entrant into the match. She's large, she's pissed off, and she's coming straight for you. Jennifer Astorio. Eyes laser focused on the Mother of Pain in this match, who has been a continual thorn in Astorio's side. You have to imagine, for the entire division, Jennifer is one of the worst case scenarios to wind up with that number 30 slot.
former holder of the Shillian Dollar Championship, currently around the waist of Arya Night Valley, who will be in action later on tonight. Six competitors, one victor, one final entrant into the Overboard Rumble on Sunday. As we immediately split up. Again, half of the half of the field here is in some form of purple. We clearly have a very strong color palette that people like to use here in AI Dub. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And Battlestar hoists up Astorio. And what does Battlestar have in mind here? A bold move by Battlestar. Mac cheering her on, Jenneth able to roll through but trying to choke the life out of Astorio there, slowing down the larger competitor by cutting off the supply of oxygen, but Val is going to regret that. And Mac putting in an impressive display of strength, hoisting up Astorio who has seemingly become a target in this match, working over the spine. If there's anyone who knows about a weakened spine, it's Battlestar. When a steel chair came from somewhere in the ring, I can only assume that was the Mother of Pain who brought that in. And Astorio out for payback, crashing Battlestar onto the steel chair. That is not going to help those spinal issues. Chen Harper locking up with Ashapol. Hook suplex over goes the half orc. And Astorio now is just punishing Battlestar. And here we have it. The Mother of Pain once again playing spoiler to Jennifer Astorio. Mother of Pain, the problem that Jennifer cannot seem to find a solution for. Abdominal stretch locked in deep on Chen. Hoists are over though. That steel chair not being used so much as a weapon as a landing pad. Battlestar crashing down. Asha right there to capitalize too, following through. And Jenna punishing, wrenching the neck of the Mother of Pain. Mac. I think she took a bathroom break there, went up the ramp, and has now finally decided to rejoin us. And Ashapol on a dominant streak in the middle of the ring, now the two largest competitors by a mile. Asha now with that steel chair, Jennifer had it scouted. Up on to the shoulder, looking for an atomic drop, I think. Asha able to fight her way out, though. And Mac trying to crack the fingers of Battlestar. Asha now has that steel chair back and cracks it over the back of Astorio. Oh, and looking for pedigree to Jenneth. Asha rolling her onto the steel step chair, but Chen, there she is, that ring awareness, the ring general. Chen Harper, there is no substitute for experience, and Chen has that in spades. All competitors now back in the ring. Mac trying to work over the back of Asha. Chen capitalizes. Hook, hook arm suplex over goes Mac. Jenneth tried to go for the pinfall on Mother of Pain. Broken up by Harper. Gets the neck breaker locked in. Harper and Battlestar now. And down goes Chen. Asha's got the steel steps. There's Mac though. Plants Battlestar. 
mother of pain right there to break up the pinfall attempt. This is the cat with these matches. You've got to try and get it in when all the opponents are otherwise occupied, or they're going to get in and break up your pinfall attempt, just like the mother of pain did there. Now we hear Candy Holiday leaving the arena on her way to celebrate. Mother of Pain took advantage of Mac being stunned in the corner. Almost had it, but just barely able to be broken up. Asha just showing off that powerhouse strength now. Clothesline to Jenneth. Mac tried the same thing with significantly diminished results. But then goes for the pinfall. Oh, could this be it? Two, I think she's good. No, Asha kicks out at two. And planted goes Mac. Asha broke that up before we even got the one count. And again, all six competitors back into the ring. Nobody able to get enough distance to really capitalize. Astorio sent out of the ring. Taking a moment to stagger back to her feet. And just waiting, taunting on the outside, giving herself some breathing room. Smart strategy by Jenneth. Let the others weaken themselves, and then she's right there to prevent that pinfall by Battlestar. Release suplex, over she goes. And up and choke slam down into the Matt Goes Battlestar, but far too much traffic in the ring to capitalize. Jenneth knows this, doesn't even try. Going for the steel steps, but intercepted again by the Mother of Pain. Meanwhile, Chen going for a knee strike. Val had it scouted out the way. Battlestar clothesline to Chen Harper. Everyone distracted on the outside. This could be a golden opportunity for Battlestar. And the hole! Sending Chen all the way down through. One, two. Mother of Pain waiting to see what happens there. Didn't break it up. Chen had to dig deep. A golden opportunity for Battlestar. But Chen Harper just too resilient. DDT onto the steel chair by the Mother of Pain. Val may be out of it in the corner over there. Backstabber by Mac. And now the Mother of Pain planting Mac's head straight down. This, oh, Val resurrecting. Not quite able to wait until the last minute, but able to break it up. And here we go again. We are taking another visit down to the hole. Not able to capitalize though. Oh, Jenneth's brought the sledgehammer and again a third hole visit for the mother of pain. But Jenneth is right there waiting. Taking advantage of Battlestar's handiwork. And full advantage of it. After the punishment Battlestar inflicted upon the Mother of Pain, Jenneth came through to capitalize, forced the Mother of Pain to tap out. That's gonna feel good for Astorio. Finally, an answer to the question that has been plaguing Jennifer Storio Astorio for far too long. How do you solve for the Mother of Pain? And that is a terrifying concept for the entire division. The number 30 entrant into the Royal Rumble will be Jennifer Astorio. There cannot be a worst case scenario for every other clout chaser in that match.
that is going to be a situation that Glix is watching with intensity. Speaking of, though, our Chromatic Druid, we are up for our main event tonight, our final match to close us out before Overboard on Sunday. Both Glix and our Chilean Dollar Champion, Aria Night Valley, will be in action next. Champion versus Champion action for our Showcase main event. Right after this, we'll be right back. Okay, I just murdered Vegeta with a truck. <laughs> what the hell is this game? And she came down the stairs, breast in boobily. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> Woo, that was good. Nope. I looked at the map, went, where's the boss? Oh, it's that way, and immediately went in the wrong direction. If that is not a perfect example of my sense of direction, I don't know what is. You're the new farmer. I see. No offense, but you look like you've never held a tool in your life. Excuse me, Jim, I am well adept at holding my tool. Thank you very much. The tool guardian, not me. The god emperor made me do it! <laughs> the god emperor made me do it. Yes. Oh, can I get away with yelling that in real life, please? Wait, oh, fight is now an option. I'm sorry, I have a baseball bat? Oh, hold on, you're, s hey, you're smoking. Welcome back to our main event, Glix vs. Aria, Champion vs. Champion. Claiming the Sold Clout title from Mac early in All Influencer Wrestling's history, nobody has been able to wrest that title away from Glix. Though Glix now potentially finds herself in an extremely precarious position with Jennifer claiming that 30 slot, she is now got to be the bookies favorites to win the rumble which gives her an unblocked path at the end of which lies glyphs and from philadelphia pennsylvania the internet <laughs> honor champion lady winters aria knight valley from the fey court of winter the Winter Fae side of Arya coming stronger and stronger the longer that Shillian Dollar title is around her waist. The cruel, cold side of Night Valley has been really coming to the fore ever since she claimed that Shillian Dollar title. Neither title on the line here tonight. We are not looking to crown a double champion, but we are looking for just dominance. With the purple again. And Glix just sheer power out the gate, clothesline Lance Aria down to the mat.
And boots to the face. Disrespect shown by Glix towards Night Valley. Let her cr cl use the ropes to try and haul herself up and just came crashing down. Glix back up once again. Glix the dominant force in this match. But we have seen this almost as a strategy from Night Valley before. Bait her opponent into a false sense of security and then capitalize. And there we see it again, that powerful lariat from Glix just sending Night Valley down. And there it is, roll through. Elbow strikes to Glix. Aria now getting back in control. Crack over the leg. We've seen that running kick of Glix's end many a match before. Halts, though, that brief flurry of momentum by Night Valley. They're bathed into a back elbow. Could that have been a trap? The Queen of Winter styling, profiling, and baiting Glix. Not the best move there by Arya. Up to the top we go is Kip up. Tried to knock Glix off the turnbuckle. Cracked her own elbow off of that. And leg sweep, Glix once again in control of the matchup. Kick out by two, Arya still very much in, got plenty of fight left in Lady Night Valley. There's that back elbow quick strike again. And neck breaker by Night Valley. Can she keep this flurry of momentum going? And down it goes. Oh, we got that pin in. What? Only a one, though. Glix still got plenty of fight left in her. And over we go. Plants Glix's face first down into the mat. One, two. Kicks out at two. And stomp down goes the knee. Taking a moment to work over the neck of Glix. Pounder down into the mat. Keep up though once again by Glix. Elbow strike to the back. And rolls through. Is that going to do it? One, two. No. Aria kicks out at two. Barely through in there. And. Wait, what? There's a... one moment. I'm, I'm hearing word of a bit of a disturbance from backstage. Checking, we're going to the CCTV footage, and it looks like we have a, a disturbance breaking out in the back. Saria, Violet, and Banshee tearing seven shades of hell out of each other in the backstage area. They, this two, clearly the rivalry is, as of yet, not done. Okay, we, we are going to send security back there to break that up. Sorry about that brief interruption. We'll be right back. And we are back. And taking advantage of the interruption. Drop the drama bomb. It's press re. Press D cashing in the drama bomb. Potentially a genius move by the hunter. 
Normally, you would think cashing in and turning the match into a triple threat would be a risk for her, but she is in a match with two competitors. Presri has just doubled her chances of coming away with victory. If she is able to pin either of these competitors, it's now triple threat rules for Glixer's title. Presri has two people, both of which have been tearing seven shades of hell off of each other. She could pin Arya and claim Glixer's title right now. Not only that, now under triple threat rules, weapons are legal. She's busted out the sledgehammer, a brilliantly calculated maneuver by Presri. Ref clearing that out the way, though she does have a potential risk of her own. If Glix or Arya pin each other, they will be able to ruin her attempt and cost her that drama bomb cash in regardless of outcome that bomb has been dropped presry needs to recover she's got a golden opportunity he came in deep into the match. Arya and Glix both had each other close to pinned multiple times. And pulling herself back up, she's waiting for her chance. Waited for Arya to lock Glix up in the corner. Putting damage in. Glix still hasn't recovered. Could this be it? One, two. Arya Night Valley kicks out at two. Arya kicks out at two. Pressery almost took Glix's title from literally right in front of her. And oh, that could be a worst case scenario for Presri. We've got, no, she's fresh enough. We've seen that spin kick by Glix end many a match, but Presri fresh into this matchup had the wherewithal to kick out. Very few have survived that kick by Glix. Pressery in a very, very limited club right now. Arya spin, spinning back elbow counters Pressery's attempt. And down goes Pressery. Aria sends, uh, Aria sent, excuse me, over the rope by Glix, draping knee strike to Presri. Glix fighting for her, I would say her life, but she is fighting for something more important. She's fighting for her clout. Big chop by Night Valley. Quick strike to the back sends Glix into the ropes. Glix able to counter, but not Aria was waiting there to capitalize. Plants Glix down. Presri quickly breaks up the pinfall attempt. Neither can quite get at each other over the prone body of Glix. There she is, lights up Night Valley. And back that the sledgehammer has once again entered the equation. Crack. That noise you heard was the ribs of Glix. And is she going to go? She's gone for the pinfall. Is that going to do it? One, two. Aria saves the match. Aria just saved Glix's title. Figure four leg lock by Aria now not locked in, but Glix able able to break that up, saving the match. Knows that if Aria tags out, that uh, the taps Presbury out, that's a risk for Glix as well. Back of the skull of Presbury, right into the sharp shoulder of Night Valley. 
Glick's barely able to stand in the middle of a ring now. Double stacked in the corner. Glick's pulling through and a moment of arrogance by our champion. She thinks she's got this in the bag. Is she right? Running knee to the face of Presri. This is a dangerous position for the Huntress. But Arya's right there waiting. Go to sleep, but Night Valley is there to wake you right back up again. Spear! We saw the spear by Night Valley, and down goes Presri. Still got that locked in. Armbar locked in by Presri. Is Night Valley going to tap out? Is Night Valley going to tap? No, she pulled through. Pulled through, and Presri's gone right back for that sledgehammer again. Charging. Watch out behind you, Night Valley. Crack. That sledgehammer doing a world of work for Presri D in this match now. Rolls out of the ring. The Huntress stalks her prey. And she's right there. Glicks back into the ring. Try to take Night Valley out of the picture. Bounces her off the ship siding. She's got the... the Sledgehammer once again, Night Valley able to counter, Glicks over, and now it's Presri's turn to be locked into that ship siding. Glicks wrapping around the waist of Night Valley, sends her back into the ring, taunting right in the face of Presri D. And up she goes, crack over the ribs. Night Valley waiting. Ties her up in the ropes. We can see it though. You see what's waiting down there right by Presri. And Glicks. Missile dropping through. Now she's got a baseball bat. Glicks, watch out behind you. You are about to be in for a nightmare of a time. That is not the type of bat the Druid likes. Presri doing damage to the prone Glicks. And she's got her eyes back on Night Valley. Sends the Winter Princess back into the ring. And Roxa, oh, and she's got that. She's got the armbar locked in. Glicks is down on the outside. Glicks barely makes it in. Glicks saving her Sold Clout Championship by a hair's breadth. But this might do it. Arya's down. One, two. Is she going to do it? Is she going to do it? Presri wins! Presri D wins. The drama bomb has been dropped. Presri D is your new sold clout champion. Not by pinning Glicks. That is not going to sit well with the Druid, but Presri could not care less. The Hunter has scored her mark. What a seismic change of landscape going right into Overboard. Now, the winner of that match will be targeting the new Sold Cloud Champion, Presri D. The flip side of this is this now means the spot that was going to be Presri's in that match may well be open to a certain druid who has one path back to the cloud. What a way to wrap our go-home show 
for AI Dub Overboard, which will be this Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern, right here, usual place. We are in for a hell of a show. I have been your clout missioner, Captain Tyrion Gaidal. We will see you on Sunday for Overboard. And until then, as always, stay hashtag out for clout.